Hey, this is Dr. Marisa Snyder, women's hormone expert, author, and the host of the Essentially You podcast. And today I'm going to be sharing with you what is the best time to eat dessert so that you do not end up on the blood sugar roller coaster. Because you and I both know what it feels like to be on that roller coaster, right? It's crazy cravings, it's lagging energy, your brain doesn't work properly, maybe you're a little bit moody, and ooh, you can get hangry. So I want to make sure that we are stabilizing that blood sugar so that you can have your cake and eat it too, and not experience the inflammatory repercussions when our blood sugar spikes too high. Now, the reason why this matters is one, currently the majority of us are consuming over 60 pounds of sugar every single year, up to hundred pounds of sugar per person per year. That is a lot of sugar, no matter how you cut it. And then also 90% of us are experiencing crazy blood sugar spikes that are in the diabetic range. And we know when we have these spikes, we end up creating an inflammatory response that over time can lend to chronic conditions that again, I don't want you to experience. And so what I want to do is not only highlight when the best time to have dessert is to keep those blood sugar levels as stable as possible, but also I want to highlight the times that dessert could potentially raise your blood sugar and create that spike and crash that I talk about when it comes to the roller coaster. So let's first start out in what are the two times of the day that it doesn't really serve us to have just straight dessert? And what does that do to our bodies? So the first time of the day is going to be breakfast, morning time. Remember the first meal of the day sets the tone for your day. And so if we are filling up on cereal or pop tarts or acai bowls or fruit smoothies or muffins or sugar in our coffee or frappuccinos or whatever it is, whatever has got a lot of carbs, starches, processed sugar, refined sugar, that is going to not only spike our blood sugar, but it's going to pretty much spike us for the rest of the day. So if we have lunch, it's most likely going to spike our lunch dinner, same thing. And it can take over 36 hours to recover from that dessert breakfast meal that you had in the morning. So you can imagine, we really want to focus on savory foods for breakfast so that we really set our blood sugar up for success for the rest of the day. And it also has a big impact on the way our brain works, our mood and our energy levels. The next time of the day that I do not recommend having just straight dessert without anything else is going to be during snacks, right? So many of those snack foods out there are highly processed carbs or they're highly processed sugar, whether it's a protein bar or some type of granola bar or whatever it may be. And again, especially when it's eaten by itself, it's most likely going to spike that blood sugar, causing you to crash having you be super hungry two to three hours later, right? We've had that experience where we ate breakfast and then we were hungry at 1130. Then we had lunch and then we were hungry. We needed a snack at 230. And then we were just trying to get to dinner. And then we have that late night snack, right? We're just constantly on this blood sugar roller coaster. So now that you know the two times to not have dessert, <laughs> I want to speak into the time that's going to best serve your metabolism and your blood sugar levels. And that's going to be after a really robust meal filled with protein, healthy fats, and a gang of fiber, right? That's the trifecta. Not only the trifecta for your gut, for your liver, for your hormones, but also for your metabolism and your cells. And if you set your, your body up and your metabolism up, with those foods, a lot of protein, healthy fats, and fiber, you're going to slow down that sugar from dessert on the backside of that meal. So you're less likely to have a big glucose spike. Now it's still going to raise your blood sugar because it you're having dessert, right? Um, and unless I'm going to go over a couple of healthy dessert swaps where you can really get your dessert and not have a negative impact on your metabolism and your blood sugar. So again, I think personally, the best time to have dessert, which is probably the weirdest time for some people, is after lunch. I feel like the Italians got it right. I know they have really robust lunches um, because we are more insulin sensitive during the day at lunch, have that dessert right after, right after lunch. And again, it's going to help buffer that blood sugar response. Um, and then the next time is going to be after dinner, but try to have your dinner earlier. The later we get, the more insulin resistant we get, or just we, we tend to be more prone to blood sugar spikes as it gets later. For us, we eat um, around 6, 6.30. Um, and then we often, if we do have dessert, it's going to be 80% dark chocolate. Maybe it is strawberries or berries and cherries with a little bit of coconut whip that we make homemade. So there's no sugar in it. Other things is just a handful of berries like raspberries and, and strawberries, blueberries is a great one. 
or potentially it is a, there's a lot of no sugar alternatives out there as well. One of my favorite chocolates right now is Evolve chocolate. They make some really yummy Evolve cups like almond cups or keto cups that I think are really good. They don't use any sugar substitutes like xylitol or erythritol. And so it's super clean. So you want to be focusing on ideally desserts that are not going to spike your blood sugar in general, but also if you eat them after dinner, it's a less likely chance that it's really going to spike super high into that diabetic range. So what I'd love to do, I'd love to have you do is try it out. Try having dessert either after lunch or after dinner, especially on the earlier side after dinner. And then to really help blunt that response, go for a 15 to 20 minute walk. Most likely you're, if you do this for seven to 10 days, you're going to notice that you're going to have more energy throughout the day. You're not going to be prone to snacking as much. You're not going to feel so hangry or moody. So those are going to be my recommendations. Again, you want to have dessert after that robust meal so that those, that protein, that fat and fiber slow down the blood sugar from hitting the bloodstream. Now, if you loved this concept and you loved this information today, definitely subscribe to the show um, because I'm bringing more of these episodes your way.